There are very few results in this uh, course. For example, sure decomposition theorem is one of them, which apply to any matrix. And this is also one of them. You can find the singular value decomposition of any matrix. OK, so the way we prove this is um, first we will prove using induction that there exists unitary U and V such that U Hermitian AV equals some matrix S where S is a matrix which has um, real non-negative diagonal block on the top left corner and zeros everywhere else. And then we will show that that S is equal to the sigma that we've defined here. OK. OK, so now, um, so, uh, so what we'll do is we will first uh, perform the, the proof that there exists a U and V such that U Hermitian AV equals S, where S is a diagonal matrix. Um, it's actually a rectangular matrix. So yeah, so I mean a, re a rectangular matrix with only the top left uh, R cross R block being um, uh, non-negative and real value. Uh, we'll show that by induction. So we'll, in, we'll, we'll do induction on the minimum of M and N. So in any induction uh, based approach, the first step is to show that the induction holds for the index equal to one. So suppose min of M N is equal to one. So that either A is either a row vector or it's a column vector. OK. Now, uh, if A is M by 1, then it is a column vector. So I'll call it, say, this vector A is a column vector. Okay, now we'll just directly let u, okay, be um, in C to the m cross m be unitary with first column A over norm of A. Okay. Now um, we can uh, uh, we can uh, we can without loss of generality throughout this proof we'll assume that uh, A not equal to zero. without loss of generality because uh, I mean you can trivially show them. I mean this is trivially true if a is equal to zero you just choose sigma equal to zero and you can choose any unitary u and v and this will this will hold okay so um, the, the result holds trivially if a is a zero matrix so a2 here is non-zero so it's okay to divide by the l2 norm of a okay now uh, it's always possible to find a unitary matrix you once you pick the first column you just pick orthonormal columns to it and form a unitary matrix of size m by m. OK, and let uh, V be just this matrix with a single one. OK, this is a one cross one matrix with entry equal to one. Then U Hermitian AV is then going to be equal to, and, and incidentally this A2 So this is also true. I mean, you can you can write out uh, for for this column vector. You can write out and see that this is actually true. So um, 
So then if I compute U Hermitian AV, when I do U Hermitian times A, A has only one column in it, and that column is in the same direction as the first row of U Hermitian, and all other rows of U Hermitian are orthogonal to the column of A. And so this is actually equal to the norm of A and then zeros everywhere else. Okay, and this is exactly the form I wanted, which is that um, U Hermitian AV equal to sigma. And in this case, sigma is of size M by N, where um, N is equal to one here. So this is M by one. Now, uh, similarly, If A is uh, 1 cross N, then A is a row vector. And um, I'll write it. Uh, let's see how do I want to write it. Okay. Then um, I will take uh, U equal to the one cross one matrix one and V to be a unitary matrix of size N cross N with A over norm of A as first column. Okay, then once again, U Hermitian AV. So A is this A Hermitian, and when I have this here, the first column of V, when it multiplies with A, I will get A Hermitian A, which is A2 squared divided by A2. So that will be A2. And all other rows, or all other columns of A, V will be zero because the other columns of V are all orthogonal to this A, A Hermitian here. And so this will be equal to zero, zero, and is of size one by N. So again, it is in the form when uh, form that uh, U Hermitian A, V equal to sigma. Okay, so this uh, this shows that the theorem is true when min of m n equals one. Okay, so now we go to the induction step. So so we um, assume. Theorem holds for all uh, M by N matrices with min of M N strictly less than K. Okay, so uh, min M N up to K minus one. And now we need to show that it holds for the K, uh, min M N equal to K also. So, let uh, A be of size M by N. And suppose I define sigma to be the spectral norm of A. Okay. Then choose Okay, I'll, I'll just write what this is so that it's clear. Okay, so now this is an optimization problem that has some solution. Whatever the solution gives us as the objective function, that is by definition equal to sigma, which means that there exists some x for which 
uh, norm L2 norm of AX equals sigma. And suppose X is that particular X. OK, so I'll, I'll write this as X tilde here. And then I'll say, suppose X um, in C to the N is such that X two equals one and A X equals Sigma. We'll be back in one second. Huh? So, so suppose X is that vector that solved this one. And uh, so X is some vector such that L2 norm is one and uh, the L2 norm of AX equals Sigma. And uh, let Y in, or I'll just say, let's define Y to be Sigma inverse times AX. Okay, again, because uh, A is not equal to zero, uh, and uh, so this uh, quantity, this quantity is strictly positive, so sigma is also strictly positive. So it's okay to write sigma inverse or one over sigma times AX. So it's again coming because we are assuming A is a non-zero matrix. So then, um, so uh, AX, or rather, IE, a x equals sigma y and also if I compute y 2 I will get equal to 1 because the norm of y uh, l2 norm of y is going to be 1 over sigma times the l2 norm of a x and the l2 norm of a x equals sigma so y 2 equals 1. Now let u be in C to the M by M be unitary with Y as its first column. It's a unit norm vector, so we can choose Y to be its first column. And let V in C to the N cross N unitary with X as its first column. Okay, so again X2 equals one, so I can choose uh, X to be the first column of this unitary matrix. Now comes the magic, so then if I compute U Hermitian a V, this is equal to, I can write it as sigma 0, 0, some W Hermitian and some matrix C here, where W is in C to the N minus 1 cross 1 and C is a matrix in M minus one cross N minus one. Okay, this happens because of the way we've chosen this U and V matrix. So if you want, you should just multiply it out and convince yourself that this is in fact true. Now, um, if I multiply this by AV, if I multiply it by the Hermitian of this first row here, then it's the same as multiplying this by this, this vector. And what I'll get then is sigma squared plus W Hermitian W as its first element and C times W as whatever sits below that. And now if I take the norm of this, I have that the norm of U Hermitian AV times Sigma W is at least equal to the square of the first entry here.
So in other words, actually the norm of this is this square plus the entries of this square, whole square root. But if I drop all the terms corresponding to this and then just take the square root, this is what I will get. Sigma square plus W Hermitian W. And that becomes a lower bound on the norm of this vector here. Now, um, by now we use the submultiplicativity. Um, we have that U Hermitian AV. Sir? Sir? Yeah? So shouldn't they have been under root in the lower bound? That's what I'm saying. So what I would do normally is, I would do sigma squared plus W Hermitian W square plus sigma I equal to one to uh, Sir, I got, Sir it, I, got I got it. You got it, right? So yes, one yes. to I want to say uh, m minus one c w eighth entry square. I need modulus over here because these are complex value square, and then I should be taking this whole thing power half. And what I'm doing is I'm just dropping all these terms. Then when I take the power half, I'll just get this thing. Now this is less than or equal to the product of the norm of this times the norm of this times the norm of this, but these are unitary. So their norm, their Euclidean norm equals one or their, their spectral norm equals one. And so this is just norm of A. Okay. Okay, now um, the other thing is that um, um, if I multiply, if I apply the submultiplicativity on this, what I have is U Hermitian AV sir, sir. sigma W, yes. Uh, sir, uh, U Hermitian AB uh, spectral norm will be equal to uh, spectral norm uh, because uh, left and right multiplication. So, uh, it, will it be less than is equal to? Mm, good question. Um, okay. Yeah. So, Yeah, in fact, uh, I think, you know, we are actually going, going there. Uh, just bear with me for a minute. Um, for now, I'm just using the submultiplicativity sub property to claim that the spectral norm of U Hermitian AB is less than or equal to the spectral norm of A. Okay. So, um, uh, so, so now, uh, if I look at the L2 norm of, oops, L2 norm of this, this is less than or equal to the norm of U Hermitian AV times the norm of this vector sigma W. And so from this we have that so I could have probably done this faster if I had said that these two will be equal. But anyway, um, I'm just following the textbook here. Uh, so, so what we have from this is that um, sigma squared. So, so this quantity, okay, this is a lower bound on this. So I should put this over on this side. So sigma squared plus W Hermitian W is less than or equal to this quantity, 
which is less than or equal to this quantity and this itself is the norm of uh, a uh, So this itself is less than or equal to the norm of A times the L2 norm of sigma W is nothing but sigma squared plus W Hermitian W power half. Right. And so if I just square both sides and then cancel off one of the sigma squared plus W Hermitian W, I have that sigma squared plus W Hermitian W is less than or equal to the spectral norm of A. But sigma, let me go back to sigma. Sigma is equal to the spectral norm of A. Okay, so what that means is, and, and so sigma, so if I substitute this here, it says that W Hermitian W is less than or equal to zero, which in turn implies that W equals zero. Because this is a non-negative quantity, and so if it's going to be less than or equal to zero, the only way it's possible is if W equals zero. And so in this in this matrix, whatever we wrote here, it means that this is this U Hermitian AV is now reduced to a form where you have sigma and then zeros in the first column and then zeros in the first row other than the one comma one entry. And this is an M minus one cross uh, N minus one matrix. And you can now apply the inductive argument on this. And so, uh, so that basically completes the induction part of the argument. So now apply uh, the inductive assumption. Uh, to the M minus one cross N minus one matrix C. This is similar to what we did in the case of the Schur's theorem uh, proof. Okay, and so we can, and then that completes the induction argument. Okay, now there is one one last part of the proof where I need to show that um, U Hermitian AV is equal to sigma. So suppose um, there exists U in C to the M by M, V in C to the N cross N, and the existence of these we've shown in the by the induction inductive argument such that U Hermitian AV equals S where S has zeros everywhere except for the top left R cross R block. with say gamma one through gamma r on the diagonal. Okay, we need to show that these gamma one through gamma r are uh, equal to sigma one through sigma r. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, how we got rid of that under root of sigma square plus uh, w emission w? So if, if you square both sides of this equation, I'll get sigma squared plus W Hermitian W squared equals, uh, so there's a square missing here. Right, and then I'll yes, get sir. 
sigma squared plus uh, w Hermitian w and I'm canceling that on the this side. So I have this thing square. Okay, and sigma equals norm of A2. So sigma squared is equal to norm of A2 squared. So this and this cancel. And so from that I get W Hermitian W less than or equal to zero. So thanks, there, there's a square missing here. So we can assume uh, gamma one greater than or equal to gamma two greater than or equal to etc. gamma n, gamma r, um, uh, without loss of generality, because if not, we can always permute the columns of u and v to, to make these uh, in decreasing order. Now, u Hermitian av equals s means that av equals u times s. I'm just pre-multiplying by u so that um, a times the ith column of v is equal to gamma i times the ith column of u. Okay, and this is true for i equal to 1 through r. Okay, this is just writing out what this means because s is a diagonal, has an r cross or diagonal sub block and everything else is equal to 0. And similarly, um, u Hermitian times a and my right multiplying by v Hermitian is equal to s v Hermitian which then implies u i Hermitian times a is equal to gamma i times v i Hermitian for i equal to 1 to r. Okay, so what this means is that Um, if I look at, let me take the Hermitian of this. So, A Hermitian times Ui is equal to, gamma is a real, so it's just gamma i times Vi. So that um, if I look at, and ui, so if I take this gamma i to the other side, I can write this as a Hermitian a vi is equal to gamma i squared times vi. i equal to 1 to r. So that implies that gamma 1 squared up to gamma r squared are the non-zero eigenvalues of a Hermitian a. So by definition this implies that gamma i equals sigma i because we defined sigma i's to be the square roots of the eigenvalues of a Hermitian of a for i equal to 1 up to R. So that completes the proof. Okay, so um, the so one one uh, the couple of more remarks. Um, so the columns of V the uh, a full set of orthonormal eigenvectors of the matrix A Hermitian A and the columns of U are a full set of orthonormal eigenvectors of A A Hermitian. Okay. I mean, it's possible that there are multiple such sets, but they, they this V are one such full set of um, orthonormal eigenvectors. Uh, this is by construction on how we build this proof. Mm, and then also, um, uh, 
another consequence of this uh, proof is that this uh, so this what we defined to be sigma which is um, so this is um, the so that the the, the um, spectral norm of a is the largest singular value of e. Okay, uh, we, we saw that sigma is one of the singular values. Okay, and uh, um, it is in fact the largest singular value of e. Um, this two for a square matrix is equal to square root of mu where mu equal to the largest of a Hermitian a. Okay, so you can try to relate these um, on your own later. 